All right, the purpose of this tutorial is to talk through some estimation of panel data models in R and how to get appropriately clustered standard errors. I, I'm working in R Studio. We've got our variables and objects will show up here as we define them. I already defined a data set and read it in. Uh, read in some useful packages, including my own package. Uh, this data frame has some information about videos on YouTube. Uh, so it's got different videos, different days, uh, has revenue views, and then some measure of uh, how central the video is to the network that I call BET.dailies. We're, we're mostly just going to be dealing with a regression of revenue on views, uh, just for illustrating how, um, how to do uh, fixed effects and random effects models in R. Um, in particular, we'll be focusing on this wonderful package, PLM, which offers a lot of canned routines, but I want to appeal to some other packages that you may know um, and some tip standard methods so that it helps you kind of get a sense for how uh, to do panel data or what, what's going on underneath the hood. Uh, looks like we've got 30 days. So this really is kind of a, a fairly short panel where you can see there are 30 days. Uh, is each video shows up uh, 30 times uh, in, in the video is defined as a factor. This is kind of standard output for a factor. Uh, day is formatted as a number. And we've got uh, a range of revenues uh, by day, uh, by video, and a range of views by day, by video. And we're going to be interested in seeing well, how much uh, revenue did these videos earn um, based on uh, the views that they receive. We could do the fixed effects model where we use individual fixed effects. And a standard thing is to run uh, just a linear model, do a regression of revenue on the number of views, and also include a, a full set of dummy variables for a video. And we'll just uh, run this regression. Um, well, that's sort of a standard way to do uh, fixed effects. If we were to type in summary mylm, well, this is pretty ugly output, uh, as you can see. It actually gives us every single dum dummy variable estimate, uh, which we're not particularly interested in doing. Uh, we we're only really interested in the coefficient on views. Uh, one of the things that I've done uh, in, um, in my package is this uh, function uh, robust. This function robust, uh, you can s use it to feed uh, or to create a uh, an object. Uh, well, I'll just call it my Rob, um, which is an object that is really just a linear model object. But you can tell the the summary command, which is going to be m table, uh, to keep um, to keep just one of the variables or to drop variables as well. Uh, so this is my way of, uh, of sort of cleaning up the output. And so we can sort of clean it and create a, an object called my Rob instead of my linear model. And that'll be, uh, that'll be useful when we get down here to our uh, M table command. Uh, so the PLM library has a whole bunch of different uh, methods implemented in it. Um, and the function is PLM instead of LM. And the way you do it is you just do a formula. Uh, just like we ordinarily would. And then it sort of understands that we want to do uh, some kind of panel data method. And so uh, what does it do? Well, it lets us specify which model. Remember, the uh, within transformation is what we use to uh, implement fixed effects. And if we want it to apply to an individual uh, in this data set, the that we can do uh, fixed effects for an individual. And in order for the PLM command to understand what, um, what individual is, we need to specify the index so that, uh, so that it knows which column is an individual, that's going to be the first one in this index, and which column is a uh, time period. That's going to be the second, uh, the second element of index. And so we specify index in this PLM function so that we feed an ordinary data frame. Uh, that's how it works. Because I mean, if we do this, you can see that it gives us exactly the same um, uh, output. Uh, one little difference here is that PLM is giving you the uh, R squared, uh, uh, kind of the partial R squared after you've netted out all of the, uh, all of the fixed effects, whereas LM, will give you the R squared uh, overall. 
Another thing the PLM command can do is it can do random effects. So if, uh, if you're familiar with the LME4 library to implement random effects, we can use the LMER, um, the LMER function, which will then give us uh, basically a way to do random effects uh, by video. Um, so we can get a random intercept by video using this syntax. So we just put it into the formula statement, uh, tell it to, to use the data frame, and that'll give us an object that we could then summarize. If we want to do this in PLM, um, all we need to do, it's actually a pretty straightforward, uh, very similar syntax to what we had in fixed effects. Use the same model formula, but instead we use model equals random, um, and this will give us uh, exactly uh, what we want as a uh, random effects estimation of, of PLM. So I'm going to now summarize these using mtable, because there is an mtable routine for LME4 objects. And as you can see, it's not quite numerically equivalent. The difference between uh, how PLM implements random effects versus how LMER implements random effects. Uh, LMER uses a method called REML, Restricted Maximum Likelihood. And uh, PLM uses this uh, quasi-time demeaning GLS uh, methodology. Um, and there, there are different ways to get at the same kind of, uh, kind of effect, um, but they won't be numer exactly numerically equivalent. They're not quite the same method of estimating, and so it, you shouldn't be surprised if you get a little bit of numerical differences. Um, you can try out a whole bunch of different examples. Um, they're going to be very, very similar uh, estimates. To... Okay, so that's so that's fixed effects. That's uh, random effects. Uh, if you want to see uh, what other uh, options there are, this panel data LM model PLM function gives us a lot of different models that we can run. We could run pooled OLS, which is really easy in LM. Do within. Uh, we do the between transformation, random effects, which we um, we just talked about, and we can do all, we can also do first differences. It'll just kind of automatically implement these. Um, there are a lot of different options that you can specify. Uh, you can uh, you can also specify uh, instrumental variables uh, um, methods in here. Uh, if if you just uh, use and here I'll point out if you use a formula that looks like this where um, you use the vertical bar and then on the right hand side are your instrumental variables. So, uh, so this function does a lot of different things, um, uses very similar syntax a, a, across these different methods and so it, uh, it, is a, it is quite useful. When you're doing these, um, these panel data methods, you really want to be um, cognizant of how you compute standard errors, um, whether they're uh, whether they're valid. Um, and one of the things that you might observe is you might observe a, a clustering of standard errors, correlations within. The way to correct for this is to cluster, uh, cluster your standard errors by group. Uh, what, uh, one of the kind of awkward things about PLM uh, versus the uh, linear models framework is that cluster, uh, clustering is naturally handled, uh, at least in this framework of using mtable. Uh, as well. So to this end, uh, I wrote a uh, I wrote a function, and it's in the script cluster functions dot r. I'll make it available um, as as well. Um, and this this function um, is a clus dot, uh, underscore se. Uh, you feed it uh, your uh, fitted model, um, and this is going to, this has to be a linear model, uh, and then you feed it a uh, um, a character string. Um, so it could, if it tells you the name of the variable that it, you're going to use to cluster. Um, so it's just going to be called cluster kind, and it could have either uh, it could either be a vector of two uh, if you want to cluster by two dimensions, or it can be a vector of one. And in full disclosure, I'm using uh, Mahmoud Aray's uh, code uh, underlying this. So I ported his code into um, into this uh, function that essentially wraps around it and gives you uh, standard errors uh, that are clustered by a factor. And so here's some code that implements that. Uh, so let's say we want to uh, include uh, both uh, individual and time fixed effects in this regression. So we'll redefine my LM. We'll do the same thing in uh, PLM. 
uh, which the way you do that is you use two way uh, and that will uh, that will give you this uh, this fixed effects sort of across time and and across individuals and then um, I want to sort of reformat things um, because LM has that ugly output that gives you all of the fixed estimated fixed effects. So we're really doing the least squares dummy variables approach there. And so what I'll do uh, is use the robust function to then just sort of clean that up. So call that RM1. Um, but this robust function also has um, a standard error argument and that function plus underscore SE we can use to give us some standard errors to feed to this uh, robust function and then just kind of it basically just writes over it in the m table command to do cluster by day cluster by video id cluster by day and video id and summarize this using m table so all, all that function all these robust functions did was sort of process the lm object so that it would write over the standard errors if we look at this, it's really not that unrealistic compared to just clustering by uh, individual or clustering by day. Now, in all fairness, uh, the authors of PLM did uh, did care about giving um, their users a way to um, a way to cluster uh, by a factor, and so. Uh, let's let's go ahead and look at like their way to do that what the way they do this is they actually have a uh, function the vcove hc they extend that to uh to the panel data uh framework and so this they use this function called pvcove hc and you can use this method uh called ariano which allows you to get a specified general serial correlation um across uh, for each individual um, and general heteroscedasticity and the way you can do this is you just feed this to feed this and a PLM object to the COIF test object in uh, in the LM test uh, library. We can do that and see we get a very similar magnitude, um, but sort of numerically different uh, standard error. So it's 0 0.813 compared to 0 0.836. Now that I've played around a little bit with this. I think it has to do with different degrees of freedom uh, corrections. Um, one thing that I did do is I compared to a, no, a known example, and uh, I've got some code here where I read in some data from Thompson uh, 2011 and use, uh, use my clustering method uh, to sort of replicate the results. If we do that, uh, it turns out that we get actually exactly what uh, what is on his uh, on his website? So if you just uh, sort of do a search for uh, Thompson 2011 uh, examples of of Stata, uh, where he does this in Stata, uh, this gives you actually exactly the uh, Stata standard errors uh, that are produced. So the method that uh, that I'm I'm pushing that was based on Mahmoud Ari's implementation of the clustering uh, standard errors um, is. Uh, numerically equivalent to what what you what Thompson obtained in Stata looks very similar. It looks like they provide very similar numerically close. I, I think it's just a degrees of freedom correction, uh, so I haven't quite pinned that down. But nevertheless, um, it, it looks like the method that uh, Mahmoud Ra uh, pr uh, produced uh, is is a way that is consistent with other other ways to do this. So I'll post this code. On my website and hopefully uh, this will be useful um, for you. Thank you.